like one punishment was writing the multiplication tables 12 times each. 1 through 12, 12 times each. So I hate math now. I don't like, I'm good at math, but I don't like math. Just because I remember those and my kids are like, help me if this is a multiplication. Mm -mm. Nope, go to daddy. I can't do it. And when you got in trouble, what would happen? Oh, it just depended on her day. Those are the earliest, but I still have the love of reading, so we kept that one. It's interesting that you would read to your cat who couldn't betray you. Yeah. But your stepsister could betray you. Mm -hmm. Or mom could betray you. Yeah. And you shared yesterday that you're bipolar mm -hmm. and your emotions can betray you but your intellect can't be trained. That's why I love reading. <laughs> reading and all of that, and piano, music. So you might want to explore that with your therapist, that one of the reasons you don't trust the emotions is because they could betray you, but the intellect doesn't. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of betrayal that my stepsister always got me in trouble, didn't matter what I did. It, it was there, so I was always scared of getting in trouble, so I would say, oh, yeah, can we go to the bookstore? And just get a stack of books, and I would read a chapter book in a day. Yeah, there's a big, big betrayal thing. Do you have backache? Oh, I have degenerating discs in my back, so. <laughs> of course, I have backaches. I just work out, and I'm just like, all right, they're not we there. Do. You're not there. In here, we look at how the body is a loyal servant to the mind. And so lower back pain in this area goes along with betrayal. So it's logical. Yesterday I had a client and I said, oh, does your husband have hemorrhoids? And she's like, yes, how'd you know? I said, because he doesn't have a place in the world. <laughs> and hemorrhoids has to do with not having a place. The body is a loyal servant to the mind. So you have to have those back issues because you have betrayal issues. And your mind won't betray you. Your intellect will betray you. But your emotion will betray you. Your stepsister will betray you. Your cat won't betray you. Oh, no. So the issue here is a major betrayal issue as your death. So that's where we have to get. The key <coughs> thing is, where do you betray yourself? You self-betray. When you don't allow yourself to feel yes. or be in the moment. Yes. So that's what we have to work on with you. You'll be a good you'll be a good patient for us. Um, anyone else? Pedro? Uh, I just remember going to my aunt's house after school and doing homework. Uh, she was a teacher at the same school that I was going, and it was easier for my dad to uh, have a babysitter. So I, was, uh, I thought you were going to say something. It was homework. It was homework. <laughs> I thought it was playing with my ability. School. Those are very typical themes at seven years mm -hmm. old. Those are very Saturnian themes. So Saturn, those sort of themes of responsibility, and you are very responsible, and you're always trying to meet and do your do your, you know, responsible things. So you see how those deaths, so to speak, follow us, okay? So what happens is, at seven is the first death you remember. At zero, or conception, is actually where death begins. Do you remember what I said about pregnancy, what I said about death? I mean, what I said about birth, very important. What did I say about birth, the birthing process? No, something have to die off or something to be created. Um, so we have conception, we have pregnancy. These are the levels of the subconscious. But since we're talking about birth and death, is how you move into the stages of life. Is learning how to die. This is going to be directly related. to how we change what happens to us. Okay. When you 
are being birthed. When you are doing this, when you are being birthed, okay, your body goes through certain stages. You're having the contractions and all of that. And I gave you my example of being birthed with no anesthesia. The way that you are birthed, if you have a super long labor, if you have the umbilical cord around your, your uh, neck, that is how you're going to move in to the next stages of your life. Every time you have the next stage of your life, that's how you're going to move into those stages. Yes? Because you were talking about the umbilical cord. So, I'm not big on the doctors or whatever, but it's not a New Year's resolution, but this year I'm going to speak more on how I feel. I'm going to speak more on how I feel. I had to say that again. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I, this year I have to um, keep up with all my doctor visits and not push them back like I was doing at the end of the year of last year. I have to go to, I have to see a neurologist and I have to get this scan. Mm. Okay. So yeah. I gotta keep so up. So that's a fit chakra thing. That's also a time thing. Yeah, I gotta, Remember I the gotta thyroid cry. has yeah. to do the time. Patience, the void. I came to class today so I wouldn't be frustrated on a computer with applications. Okay, have you been keeping up with your certain number of applications a week that you said you were going to be applying? No. Okay. That's okay. You're allowed. Yesterday I did three though. I okay. did three. So you but have, I haven't you been said keeping three a week, up. right? No. <laughs> what was your resolution? No, she I said have a resolution. Gonna... Yeah, you came to class one day and you said you were going oh, to do... Oh, you call it a resolution, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or a goal. A goal yeah. My goal. Yeah, it was three a week. Okay. So See, my she memory. All the way around just the <laughs> <laughs> I'd be off, but I really, I'm starting to do mind games or whatever. My memory be gone. I don't know. So, why speaking up? Do you have an umbilical cord issue around no, your... No, no, because I learned um, by being here and expressing myself and doing all this crying. <laughs> I learned, like, the more I express myself and just tell people how I feel about what's going on in the moment versus... Because when I first started expressing myself, I wasn't expressing myself on what's currently going on. I'm expressing past feelings or whatever like that. So this year, I told myself I'm going to express myself currently, like how I feel in the moment and not about something I could have said two days ago or three days ago or something like that. So what I'm going to try to do, try to do, is... When something comes up, I'm going to talk about it right then and there. At least attempt to try to talk about it right then and there. But I'm still having some trouble doing that. So consistency got to be my thing this year. I start stuff, but I'm not consistent with it. Okay, can you close your eyes and put your hand, your opposite hand, not your dominant hand, on your throat? And I want you to take a deep breath into your throat chakra. And I want you to say the first thing that comes up. Tired. Okay, what are you tired from? A lot. Stuff not, things not going my way. Okay, can you give me an example of things not going your way? Meaning, uh, how I previously said, I feel like I'm supposed to be ahead of, like, I'm not where I think I could be or should be or something like that. So I'm tired of being in the same situation or spot location. I'm tired. Okay. Tired of trying. So if you speak up at the moment that you have something to say, will that help you catch up? and be on time? Um, I don't know. I just know I won't be keeping it in. Okay. What do you have to say at this moment to somebody, whether or not they're in the room? It's 
That would have been a good one, but no. And like I said before, every time, like when I got the message that my diploma was ready, it brought tears to my eyes because yet again, she's not physically here. Like, to me, my auntie pushed me a lot. Like, I have a lot of supporters. I have a lot of people that motivate me, especially my uncle. That gets me to, like, try to have me travel when I came back feeling myself. <laughs> um, they pushed me a lot. And, like, I'm not going to forget. I was telling her about my, my other auntie who I had the memory with. About her passing. And it's just, like, we was talking about this auntie. And she, 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 she let me down because she told me she's going to be there cheering. Because my other auntie wasn't there, so she's going to cheer extra louder for me. And she didn't get to make it. And it hurts. It still... It still hurts. And like, every time I feel down or something's wrong, and I know I can't just go to her and talk to her about it, it, it bothers me. So, like, I miss her on, I miss her on the regular. I have my uncles. Me and my, my auntie had a stronger bond than my mom. And it's just like, I miss just having to be in her presence. Rather we having the same conversation, we're in the same room. I just miss being able to just walk by and see her. Like, I don't get that no more. And it's just like, I feel people not forgetting her, but... Death bring out a lot in others. Like, you see certain things. Like, I didn't see a lot my auntie was telling me. And when she passed, it was just like, wow. So I heard a lot because I'm constantly, she's constantly on my mind. And, like, I constantly beat myself up because I feel if she was here, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I, I wouldn't be. Like, I wouldn't be at Kaiser. I wouldn't have some of the good memories that I do have, but I know for sure I would have went off. I would have went off somewhere to college. Like I wouldn't have stayed home, so my life would be completely different. So I'd like you to keep your eyes closed, and I'd like for you to symbolically remove the umbilical cord from around your neck, because part of what you have is. A symbolic metaphorical umbilical cord around your neck connecting you to her. So when you're ready, I'd like for you to remove that. It doesn't mean that you're going to disconnect to her. You're not going to disconnect to her. It's not coming off. Just try. Just to give yourself a little bit of a break, a little breath. It doesn't mean that you're disconnecting to her, but it'll give yourself a little bit of a breathing room. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of forgetting her? That's not possible. I'm not going to forget her. So why wouldn't you want to give yourself a little bit of a break around your neck? I don't know. It's hard. I know, Ma. Death is hard. <sighs> Sit with that. Think about it. We don't need to keep ourselves suffocated 
and with that umbilical cord around our neck just to keep close to someone. And I know that sometimes that's the only way we feel that we're going to keep close to them. So just think about it. If you're not ready, you're not ready. This is a tough subject, death, because we're constantly having many deaths in our life. We're letting go of people. We're letting go of things. Detachment is hard. Detachment is really hard. Why don't we take a little bit of a break and then we'll come back. 